Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In my last video, I showed you how to draw a grease pencil object on a 3D object. And someone asked in the comments how you would parent that. So if you moved the 3D object, the grease pencil object will go with it. So I'll show you in this video quickly how to do that. And then as the video continues, I'll just go over an example file that I created to show that and how that would work along with mouse substitutions and things like that. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and let's get started. So here I'm in Blender and I'm going to add a grease pencil object by going to Shift A, New, Grease Pencil Blank. So I'm going to hit one on my numpad to go into front view. I'm going to click on the grease pencil object and I'm going to go to draw mode. And up here at the top, I'm going to change origin to surface. And then I'm going to change this offset to 0.015. Now I'm going to draw just a mouth on this. So you can see that the mouth is on the object, but if I was to move the object, so let me go to object mode, click on cube, hit R to rotate. You can see the mouth doesn't go with it. So all you have to do is click on the mouth first or the grease pencil object. So you're gonna parent this and you always need to click on the object you want to parent first and then click on the object it will be parented to last. So if you had multiple things you wanted to parent to the cube, you would select all of those first by holding shift and then click the cube last and then click control P. And that gives you a pop-up menu on how to establish a parent object. So I'm just gonna click on object. If I click on this drop down next to the cube, you can see the grease pencil object is now underneath it. So if I can hit rotate, you can see the mouth now goes with it. So that's really all there is to parenting if you decide later you don't want that to be parented anymore, you can click on the grease pencil object, hit Alt P, and you can clear parent. So now if I move the cube, you can see it's no longer parented. So that's really all there is to it. You just select the object to be parented, and then the object that will serve as the parent, holding Shift, then hit Control P. You do have some other options here, but primarily I just use the object and then that's how parenting works. So I'll go to another example file to kind of give a longer explanation and to provide an example of what that looks like. So to test the grease pencil object on a 3D object, I created a little skit in a previous video and I'll show a brief clip here. Jack in the box, invest a call, take one. It saddens me to have to tell you that Jack in the Box is losing the fast food wars. Our sales haven't been great lately, and we have much room for improvement. Will we be able to catch up to our competitors? I'm not so sure, but I want to assure you and all of our investors that everyone here at Jack in the Box is being very optimistic. I'll be able to talk more in the future about our plans to increase sales and reduce expenses next quarter pounder. Ugh. It's not even the right restaurant. I'm also pleased to announce that our first cost cutting measure will be to fire my speech writer. Okay, now I'm back and I wanna show you a bit about this. So if I go to the compositing tab, you can see here's my background here. So if I go to render, that's what the background looks like. You just can't see in the layout workspace because it is part of the compositing tab. It's not actually in the viewport at the moment. So I've already unparented everything here so you can see what this looks like. I can turn the head, but you won't see any difference because it's a round object and there's nothing on it. So this scene is composed of a couple of different things. And you can see those objects over in the outliner. I've got the head, the nose, the hat, the mouth, the eyes, the body, and then also have these sheets of paper. So if I were gonna parent all this together so that I actually move it, I'll show you how I would do that. So the body's kind of intricate with the materials and the models, so I'm gonna temporarily turn that off. Now to show the example of this moving, first thing I wanna do is click on the nose and then shift click on the head. And I'm going to hit Control P and set parent to object. So now if I open the drop down next to head, you can see the nose is part of that. So if I click on the head and move it, you can now see the nose is moving with it. So we know that's parented correctly. So if I want to parent everything at once, I can select the mouth, then the eyes, then the hat, and I'm holding shift while I do that. 
and then I'm gonna click the head, which means it is last. So I wanna click on the object that will serve as the parent last and hit control P and then select object. So now you can see under my head drop down, I've got the eyes, the mouth, the hat, and the nose. So now if I click on the head and rotate it, you can see everything's rotating with it. Now let me click on the mouth and I've got mouth substitutions on the mouse. So if I scroll through here, you can see the mouth moving, the eyes are moving. So here where the mouth has moved, you can see that if I select the head and rotate it, the mouth and the eyes move with it. And if I keep scrolling through the timeline, you can see the mouth continues to work as it's supposed to. So once you have set this up with a grease pencil object on a 3D object, and I can animate the grease pencil object as I want to, and then I parent it to the head, the mouth will continue functioning as I expect it to. So before Grease Pencil came along, I tried this kind of thing in other programs using textures on a transparent background or a transparent plane. And it just never worked like it needed to because it was hard to get that to work on a 3D object. I'm not saying it couldn't be done. Maybe I just wasn't smart enough to do it but I never could get it to work like I wanted to. So being able to draw mouths in Grease Pencil and use them on a 3D object has been kind of revolutionary for me because I just think that it is a process that works really well for the effect I've tried to achieve in the past with other options. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Cut. Well, that was embarrassing. Don't worry about it, Jack. You are excellent. Muffin compares to you. You are also fired. Get out.